Hi everybody, I'm Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. I'm really excited, I've got a commission to do. It's going to be a straight pour in really dramatic colours. So we've got blues and I've got reds, yellows, golds, that sort of colour. Um, really excited. I haven't done a straight pour for ages, so I've mixed my paints. I'm going to layer my cup, pour it, see what happens. So I'm really excited. So let me show you the colours I'm using. So this is the colour sample I've showed the customer that this commission is for. Whenever I do a commission, I get ideas of what they would like, colour scheme, and then I just put the different colours down on the paper number them, write their name by each colour, and then we can have a discussion um, which which colours they prefer, which numbers they prefer, which goes with, with which. So I, I got some numbers and then I put them together to see if that would work. So that's, that's my process really in deciding on what colours um, to use for a commission. Um, so these are the colours that we're going to go with. So I've got white and I've got gold, which are both Montmartre colours. Um, I've got De La Rowney Graduate Acrylic Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. I've got one uh, Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Orange Yellow. A De La Rowney Cadmium Red Hue. Uh, Windsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic, which is Alizar in Crimson. De La Rowney Cerulean Hue and Essentials Roland Lang Nickel Thalo Cyanine Blue. Um, this, I think, is the order I'm going to, to the la layer the cup in. What we'd like, the customer and I, would like um, a really nice bright um, centre of the painting. So to get a really bright centre, I would tend to start with white and either the yellow or the gold next. So it almost looks a bit like a sunrise or a sunset. It's, it's quite it looks bright in the centre and then I'm going to layer the colours as they're going to get darker and darker and then we're going to swap to the blue the blue tones um I don't want purple and obviously if you mix red and blue together you get purple so I've tried to keep the consistency of these paints really quite nice and thick and that will just help prevent them from um, blending too much and muddying. So all of these paints have been mixed with my PVA and water pouring medium and I've made that pouring medium two parts PVA glue and one part water and then I've mixed all of these paints 50-50 pouring medium to paint. So they're quite thick so if you look there you can see the paint just leaves a little trail on the surface probably for about a second um, I've had to water some of them down more. This orange I had to water down more because it because it's an iridescent, it's quite thick. Let me try and show you on the cerulean blue. That might, it might be able to show you that a bit better. There you go. So you can see the trail and it lasts just for probably a second. So it's quite thick, but it does flow nicely as well. Great, so I'm going to start layering up my cup. Right, I'm ready to layer up my cup. I'm using one of these tiny little silicon um, cups. The canvas I'm using is a 20 by, no, a 30 centimeter hexagonal canvas. Um, so really small, so I don't need that much paint. Um, so in each of these cups, I've mixed 15 grams of paint and 15 grams of pouring medium. So very little. I've got some extra white because I'm gonna make a puddle um, in the center to pour on. I have just added into my white, I don't know if you can tell or not, I've just added a hint of gold to it. So it's now not quite such a bright, stark white. Um, I think that would look really nice. My aim is, I think, to do a couple of layers of each colour. Um, I think I've probably got way too much paint here to fill this. But I think I don't need bigger than this. So yeah, I'm just going to go for it. So to layer up my cup, I want the... The colours I put in first are the colours that will come out last. So if I want the centre to be bright and glowing, I'm going to put the white, yellow and gold in first, so that will come out last. So I'm simply just putting a layer of this white on the bottom. And then I'm going to, um, I'm going to pour a little bit down of each colour just down the side. So just I'm going to go for just a little bit of yellow. and then the gold.
Right, so my cup is nearly full, but not completely full. Um, and I've got paint left over. So I think it seems obvious to me. I'm just going to put some more paint in. The customer wanted it to be a predominantly warm coloured painting, but just with the more the, the um, hints of the blue. So I'm, it, this makes perfect sense. I'm just going to go again with just a little bit more of these warmer colours. It's also a really good idea to have your cup as full as possible because if you if you have a really big cup and only a little bit of paint at the bottom what will happen is as you tip the cup and it pours out onto your canvas the colors will will start to mix before they've even left the cup so this way when because it's going to be absolutely full to the top this cup they won't mix as they come out they might mix in midair before they hit reach the canvas but that but that'll be all whereas if it's a big cup as they literally as they slide down the edge of the cup to leave the cup that's already started them mixing together and then I will finish with the crimson Now that is one full cup. Absolutely beautiful. Can you see? I don't really handle this because it's soft as well, silicon. If I just squidge it, it's, it's gonna go everywhere. Right, I'm gonna put that to the side. Let's get the canvas here. So as I said, I'm going to do a puddle in the middle. I'm going to thin this down though. So this this is just white paint. It was the same mixture as the the white I used in the in the cup there. But because it's going to just be a puddle, the purpose of it is just so that it helps the the paints I'm going to pour on just to spread. So it doesn't need to be as thick. If it's thinner, I think it will just it will flow more easily. So I've just added a squirt more water. So you can see that's now quite runny. So let's just do a nice puddle in the centre. So let's get the cup. So I'm going to pour from the obviously from the funnel, and that's where I poured the paint into the cup. So it's going to get it goes in in that point and out that point. In fact, sorry, before I do that, let's just torch this because there's quite a few air bubbles. Wish me luck. <laughs> um, I'm, when I do this, I'm going to pour into the centre and I'm going to raise the, the paint cup up and down and I'm also going to twist my hand around to try and get some different um, sort of designs within the straight pour. Right, so you can see that white in the centre. Brilliant. Um, slightly disappointed because blue is very dominant at the moment. And I wanted red to be more dominant. It's interesting because there's a lot less blue in this 
Right, so let's just tilt it around. So I'm not going to go over the edges yet. I'm just going to tilt it. I'm just stretching it as much as I can. I've got an awful lot of paint on here. Absolutely loads of paint. So I can really spend my time getting this as I want it and tilting over the bits that I want. Right, so let's give it another torch. So I want red, <clears throat> and obviously there is an amazing band of red just in there. So I think I'll probably tilt some of this off. That would make sense to try and keep as much of that of that red. Let's tilt some blue off over in this direction. So there's now the ratio of red to blue, I would say is more 50-50. So I'm much, much happier with the ratio. There's some absolutely beautiful details and beautiful cells. It's really, really pretty. Let's give it another torch. Funnily enough, one of my favourite bits is actually this blue section here. It's really, really pretty. Right, I may leave it like that. I really like it. Although composition, I'm just not sure. My instinct is to come off this corner a bit more. So I think I think that might be what I'll do. I think really I've probably got a bit too much paint on this canvas because it's such a small canvas it's quite difficult to judge. What I'm doing now, although I'm chopping off some of the bits that I really like, I'm just looking at the composition and I just want the tiny bit of that red band over the edge, like that, so I can pull it back again. Right, I've now got a lot more red. Sorry, I know you can't see it. I've got red, but I've got these amazing, amazing stripy blue corners. Right, I think just one more tilt. Or shall I? Yeah, one more tiny tilt. Right, I think we're done. Now the reds are definitely taking over more. I think it's just because the blue is such a dramatic colour compared to the reds. The, red, the blue really does stand out. Right, just going to clean my hands and then I'll get you in for a close-up. So here it is. Um, I really love it. It's such a sweet little painting. It's gorgeous. Um, let me take you in for a close up. The richness of these colours is just gorgeous. Um, and if you look at these lines, let me get this in a better light. I'm just trying to focus. There we go. Wow, look at that. And can you see all that gold sparkle as well? So that's why I wanted to separate these iridescent colours 
because then it just spreads out the iridescence, it spreads out the sparkle. But actually, yeah, you can see sparkle all throughout that section. Really gorgeous. Um, there is a little bit of purple. Can you see maybe on that on that far corner, just where the red and the blue have mixed just a little bit? But it's you have to actually really think about it to find the purple. Really have to look for it. Um, it's not it's not too much. Um, this is gorgeous. So gold with these little blue cells just popping through. It's really pretty. And actually, this the whole thing is sparkly. Oh, I really, really like it. Um, and then the centre. Let me show you the centre. Really nice and bright. Right, I think this matches what my customer would like. Um, but I've got just a little bit of leftover paint and I've got a spare hexagonal canvas there. So I think I probably put too much paint on this. So I'm just going to layer up another cup with these leftovers and do another one. So I'll be back in a minute. Right, I've got another cup here layered up. The, the paint comes up to about here, so less paint than before. Um, the other difference is I layered it in a different order. So I put more yellow in the bottom and then I put the crimson colour, I split that three times in this cup, but the rest was just, just the twice, uh, two, the, yeah, two times. Um, but the layers are thinner, so it'll be just interesting to see if I get more variation in the colours. I tried to go much more easily on the dark blue, the phthalo cyanine blue, because that colour, and I found this before with other paintings, that colour tends to dominate and tends to take over. So I've tried to put in a smaller amount, similar amount of the cyanine blue, no, cerulean blue, sorry, cyanine, um, but um, a, a smaller amount of the dark blue. So same again, I'm just putting some a white puddle in the centre. Let's give it a torch just to burst the bubbles. Right, same again. Wow, that centre, let me see if I can zoom in and show you. Can you see how neat that little centre is? I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> wow, that's really sweet. So a much smaller band of colour this time, puddle of colour. So we'll see how this varies. Again, the red looks a bit lost. I'm not seeing loads of the red. Right, I've got a really good puddle underneath though. So as before, I'm just going to stretch it out as much as I can.
Wow, what an interesting piece. Right, we've got pink and we've got green. So both of those she didn't want, but it's really interesting. So this is great because she's she's now got a choice. Um, so I'm just gonna touch the corners, and get those covered. It's quite crazy. It's got so much going on. Um, I love it, absolutely love it. So the first thing that I've noticed, look at all the corners. So the white, I think is the thinner white that I put down as the puddle and it's coming through. So all the way along and then down the edges, I've got these lovely white cells coming up through the, the color. Um, there's this amazing band of blue. And all, can you see the sparkle? So we've got purple and we've got green. So they're the two colours I was worried about getting. I didn't want either because I, I, I knew there was a risk of getting both of those because of the colours I'm using. Uh, and I've got them both, unfortunately. But I really, really like it. So the main feature of the painting that the customer wanted was this centre where white with yellow and gold and it looks like if you stand back it just looks like a glow it looks like it's really um hot because it it's so it, it just looks so bright um and then let me show you some of the other look there's purple and green there next to each other oh it's so pretty some of these cells are just amazing So with my straight pores, I have never used Floatrol. Floatrol. Sorry, somebody said to me, it's not Floatrol, it's Floatrol. So I'm going to try my hardest to say Floatrol from now on. Um, I, I've never used Floatrol in straight pores. And I just don't think you need to. Why do you need to? Because look at the cells you get just with PVA glue and water. And all the, all the crazy, crazy designs. Yeah, I'm more than happy using flare PVA glue and water um, with this style of um, fluid art. Great, right, I'm going to take a photograph of both, send it to the customer, she can choose which she likes, um, and then I'll be back to show you them both when they're dry. I love them, they are just so sweet. Um, let me take you in, there's lots and lots to show you with these. Um, the first thing, the massive amount of gold in the center. If I just tilt this, can you just see how beautiful and sparkly and shiny that is? The iridescence is just amazing. It's gonna look absolutely stunning when it's um, varnished. Um, so what I love is look at the edges the edges so the paint just oh, it's a bit dark sorry the the paint just pours over the edges so it's a really thick solid color so you've got alternating it looks like a goldy color there with the blue right up next to each other um the center is really pretty so you've got that really bright white center which is what i was wanting um it's all very goldy very rich very goldy orangey colours. Um, I guess the only bit I'm disappointed with um, is the fact that you haven't got that bright red. Um, and I was I was hoping to get more bright red in this painting. So I love the painting. I would say it probably hasn't turned out exactly as I was wanting it to, but I'm really, really happy with it. Um, then let me take you over to the second painting. Look at these amazing corners. So the white, that puddle has popped up through unintentionally, but I love the effect. And here, so you've got these sort of pearls around the edge of the painting. Um, again, the iridescence, if I try and tilt this, can you see all of that beautiful orangey iridescent colour in between all the blue? It's really sparkly, really, really pretty. Um, so with this one, you've got a lot more interesting um, cells. So these beautiful blue ripples um, and then these gorgeous white, bright white and yellow cells. And then the, the, these multicolored cells, so stripy cells. And over here. Oh, it's just there's just so much to look at on this painting. Um, as I said, when it was wet, you've got some green and you've got some purple. So I wasn't one. I didn't want those two extra colours, but actually, 
yeah, I think it kind of matches the absolute chaos of this painting because it is quite chaotic. Um, I love it though, really, really happy with it. Um, so these, as I said, these were for a commission, but they haven't turned out as I was planning at all. So I'm actually, um, I've showed the customer and she loves them, but it's not quite what she was intending. Uh, and, and as it's not what I was intending, I want to go back to the drawing board. I want to do something that's got more red in it. It needs to be bright red. Um, but let me know what you think of these. Um, I've just ordered some more canvases this size because I love working on this 30 centimetre size canvas. Let me know what you think. Take care, everyone. Bye.